Hello, students, and welcome to week one of our spring 2022 course here in session D titled Genie 250 Making of the Christian Life. Dr. Mike Lucas back again to welcome you as we open our course today. We're going to have a fantastic eight weeks together, I believe, and I'm looking forward to the experience, and it's my high honor to be with you. After just a bit of brief introduction last week, I wanted to go into a bit more detail about what's coming in the course overall. I want to give you an overview and then look specifically at what we're doing in week one. This course features an exploration and assessment and application of scripture to key ethical and cultural issues with an emphasis on the development of moral discernment and reasoning. In short, what we're going to do in this class is to look at what is right, what is wrong, how we determine what is right and what is wrong, and we're going to compare and contrast that with a variety of philosophies and worldviews concerning the purpose, meaning, and ability in life to thrive or flourish. This course is all about fulfilling the purpose for which we exist. And integral to that purpose is knowing our identity and therefore knowing the ability that we have been blessed with to discern what is morally right and what is morally wrong and how to make good decisions so that we can build and maintain a life that thrives and flourishes. We have several course learning objectives in these next eight weeks. First of all, we want to evaluate a biblically informed approach to moral reasoning when considering various contemporary ethical situations. We're going to look at everything from abortion to physician-assisted suicide, to discrimination and racism, to homosexuality and its various iterations. And we're going to look at these not only from a standpoint of what social norms have become, but more importantly, what morality should be applied. We're not only going to look at what might be considered hot button issues that I just described, we're going to be looking at what might be considered lesser known or even more obscure and unimportant values, such as theft or stealing, coveting, making commitments in monogamous relationships so that those commitments are not violated by marital unfaithfulness or adultery. We're going to be looking at the responsibility that we have as citizens to respect authority, and specifically that begins in the family. As you might be able to determine, we're going to be looking at the Ten Commandments. And what we're going to be doing is, number two, comparing biblical reasoning with what is going to be known in our course and what is another approach to morality known as utilitarianism or utilitarian thinking. We're going to get into that a bit more as the course as the course gets underway. Third, we're going to be applying critical reasoning skills. That is a knowledge of what's known as natural law. Uh, don't be intimidated. We're going to be uh, defining and explaining and applying what these terms mean. And an appreciation for human flourishing in order to demonstrate the ability to make sound moral judgments. And then finally, we're going to recognize how justice relates to morality and what's known as moral law. We're going to have several of our course materials provided in the form of electronic documents that you can open and download or links to various videos that we will be viewing. But in order for our course to really be complete, we need to secure the following materials in addition to what's going to be provided. Number one, I hope you've already secured or it's on the way to you this volume that serves as our main text beyond the Bible itself. It's a book written by Philip Graham Riken called Written in Stone, The Ten Commandments and Today's Moral Crisis. I've given some information here about where it can be ordered. It can also be ordered through the Regent University Bookstore. If you've not already done that, I encourage you to do so. We have a reading beginning this week. Now, this week's readings have been provided, chapters one and three have been provided in week one's 
course reading materials in PDF format, but you'll need to secure that book, uh, Written in Stone, The Ten Commandments in Today's Moral Crisis, uh, Philip Graham Riken. You'll be able to purchase it through any of the major bookstores online and in person. We're going to need a copy of the scripture, and I'm narrowing our uh, selection to what are known as the more reliable, sometimes more historical translations of scripture. The King James Version, the New King James Version, the English Standard Version, the New Revised Standard Version, the NIV, the New International Version, or the New American Standard Version. These are all considered um, historical, reliable uh, translations of scripture compared to or contrasted with paraphrases, which have become quite popular. Uh, the New Living Translation, the Living Bible, uh, the Amplified Bible, for example, these are all paraphrases and they serve a purpose, but in academic work, we want to use these translations that are considered historically and linguistically more reliable. So I've listed them there. For example, when we go to write our papers that are coming up, we'll be using these translations. You can decide among them or you can mix and match them among these translations of scripture, but uh, we're not going to be using paraphrases. I'll talk more about that as we approach the next uh, paper coming up. So Philip Riken's book, and your copy of the Bible, old school hard copy or an electronic version, uh, those are going to be required in our course. As I mentioned, all of our other materials, PowerPoint files, quizzes, media, and the like, they're going to be found in Blackboard. I would encourage you beginning today, if you've not already done so, go into our course shell on Blackboard, Genie 250, Making of the Christian Life. You're either in section 12 with me as your instructor or section 13 with me as your instructor and begin looking at those materials because you as students are responsible for all of that information and material that's distributed there. Um, now, there was a version of this course that I've taught before on campus. That's not sections 12 or 13, so that doesn't apply. Everything that you're going to need is going to be found in Blackboard. All main course materials are going to be in each of the weekly folders. There are eight weekly folders. They're all dated. Our class for that particular week and that week's unit begins on Monday and continues through the following Sunday, seven days inclusive, eight total folders. You'll find everything that we need in there. As I've mentioned, uh, the College of Arts and Sciences has partnered with the Regent Bookstore to have textbooks available. This can be ordered through Regent Bookstore, and I've given you the uh, details that you need. We have several assessments or assignments that are coming in this course, including here in week one. If you've not already done so, open and read through, download, if you want to keep it in a place that you can refer to remotely, the syllabus. It's going to be our roadmap for the course. Not only is the syllabus going to provide you what you need to know about upcoming assignments, but this week, week one, we have what's called a syllabus quiz. It's easy, it's worth 1% of your total grade, and it's required that you take this syllabus quiz by this coming Sunday because it has a second very important purpose to that of introducing and guiding you through our course. Our syllabus quiz is a communication tool to the registrar's office that once you've completed it and it's submitted, they know that you plan to stay enrolled in this course. So it's, it's, it's imperative that you take this quiz, not only for the information and the guidance you'll receive, but also to indicate by taking it, yes, I'm planning to finish this course in eight weeks, and the registrar's office knows that. Along the way, we're going to have some readings quizzes. There are four total, or 6% each, for a total of 20% of our final grade. Those are found in weeks two, four, six, and eight. So coming up in week two is a readings quiz that will cover the readings that we did in weeks one and two. In weeks two course content folder, you're going to find the details for that quiz and the link that will open it up so that you can, you can take it. 
We're going to have several short papers in this class. By several, I mean three. That says two. Um, this course is, or excuse me, it's three total, but there are two short papers uh, worth 12.5% each. Uh, they are due in week two and also week six. Um, so make sure that we are on track with those papers. Uh, the details, once again, will be within the uh, course folders. Week two is coming up pretty quickly. I'm going to provide all the details you need for that as we approach week two. And I mentioned earlier week six, I believe it's week five. I will be back to you with the details about that second short written paper in week five. We're also going to do some networking with our fellow students in class through our discussion groups. And we're going to have two dialogues, uh, one in week three and one in week seven. Once again, they're worth 12.5% each for a total of 25%. And those will be calculated in your total grade as well. And I'll be giving you the details about those as they approach. You can already begin to read about them in weeks three and in week seven. Then we have our final paper. I mentioned three total. We have two short ones and then one longer one. It's due in week eight and it is a capstone to our course, and this one assignment is worth 25% of your total grade. You'll be able to read the details about that, as I say, in each of the course content folders, and I'm going to be back like this every week, providing the details to you by, by video announcement. Let's take a moment and look at week one. We're hitting the ground running. We have that syllabus quiz that I was mentioning earlier. Pay no attention to that particular date. That's out of date. This is not due on the 16th of January. That's already passed. This is due on Sunday, Jan or excuse me, March 20th. That's this coming Sunday. Uh, so all of that is, is required and it's found in week one course folder. Uh, course content folder. This week, we're going to be looking at these key concepts. We're going to talk about, we're going to define and explain what's meant by the term Decalogue. It's a way to refer to the body of teaching of law that's found in the Old Testament law of Moses, summed up in what we call the Ten Commandments. So we'll be looking at that this week. We'll be looking at and defining and explaining moral law, civil law, and ceremonial law. All three of these terms are going to come from our readings in Philip Ryken chapters one and three. Uh, those are a part of our assignment this week. So we're gonna be looking at these key terms. As I've mentioned, we have two readings from Philip Ryken, chapter one and chapter three. Chapter one serves as an introduction. Chapter three is a vital chapter on how we interpret God's law that's going to be important moving forward for the rest of our course. We also have a reading from, of all ancient philosophers, Plato. We're going to be looking at how we establish morally right and wrong. And so we have this classic piece written by Plato called Georgias. And as we read it together, once again, pay no attention to those dates. Those were for an outdated class. Uh, we're going to be reading these through the week, and they will be a part of our readings quiz coming up. Also, this week, we're going to be reading from a more contemporary philosopher and theologian, uh, a 20th century well-known figure by the name of C.S. Lewis in a section of his book, Mere Christianity, uh, that you will find in your course materials already uploaded for you. Uh, this is book one of this book, Mere Christianity. Those also come in a very uh, creative video format called Doodles Videos. If you're a visual learner, I think you will enjoy those, but those are coming up this particular week. So those are our reading materials, and those are our assignments for this week. Here's one other assignment. As we open the class, several of you have already done this, I want you to go into the discussion board area. Now that's different from our groups area. In the discussion board area, you'll see a little tab that says, say hello. Go into that community board in that green banner on the left side of the course, click on say hello, create a thread in that forum, 
and then give us a little update to yourself. Put a little title on it. You might just say hello from Virginia Beach, if that's where you're from. Give us a greeting, a little brief background, just a few lines, your name, uh, where you're from, uh, what year of school you are here in at Regent, maybe what your major is, if you've declared it, your family background, your work vocational background, just a little information about you that will help us. As I've said, several of you have already started that. Thank you for that. And I'll be joining you there within the next day or two. Here's some information about how to reach your instructor. Once again, Dr. Michael Lucas, you can call me Dr. Mike. Our courses are online. Uh, don't worry about that on campus. If you live locally and there's a need for us to get together, uh, we can do that here in Virginia Beach on campus, but we'll be meeting online. Here's my mobile number as well as my faculty email address so that you can reach me and I'll work to get back to you in these various forms, emails, calls, or even texts using that information, that contact information I provided. Remember, when calling or texting, be sure to include your student name. I don't have you in my list of contacts there, so you need to be sure to tell me who you are. Certainly by email, I'm going to know who you are. And I'm going to work to respond within the same day in most cases. I won't be doing so after 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, so I thank you for respecting that schedule, but I do want you to know I am nearby if needed. Well, that's it. Here's how we start week one. I'm excited about our time together. I'm nearby if needed. I'm praying for you already. Let's have a great beginning to a great course. God bless you.